Hello fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of July 12, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Before we begin, I'm going to invite you to stay through to the end because that is when I'm going to have preview horoscopes for the upcoming Mars retrograde season for each and every sign. I am going to make a special horoscope, of course, for YouTube, but I wanted to give you a quick preview about what it is that you can get for free in the superstar space or download on my website and I'm mentioning this now because this week is an important one where it comes to Mars as well it will be right around Tuesday that Mars will meet Chiron in the sky this is important for a few reasons one is because of the aspect itself Mars is an activating principle. Mars brings passion, intensity, and a physical quality to what it is that we feel. It is adrenaline and excitement, urgency and impulsiveness. Meeting the wounded healer in the sky, it may be the case that some of us very quickly become aware of what it is within us that feels especially vulnerable. There might be some of us who feel exposed in some way as if our wounds or the parts of us that have been hurt that we don't necessarily like to show everybody in some way come to the forefront. This may also be a time when we are taking into consideration what healthy healing actually means. But I do think for the collective, there might be an emphasis at this time placed on utilizing the will and the self being responsible for one's own healing. With Chiron, we are invited to go to that very place that we feel uh, might never heal, that we feel we may never be able to truly address in a meaningful way. And in this way, Chiron can actually be utilized because Chiron encourages action. It's like we feel we must go in that direction. With Mars, the urgency of going in the direction of our healing individually, certainly with the sign of Aries, becomes that much more of a felt and physical imperative. With Mars being so closely associated with adrenaline itself, the journey towards owning our own wounding and taking action to move through it becomes that much more of a priority. But this conjunction isn't important in and of itself or not only in and of itself. But when I look at the larger trajectory of the upcoming Mars retrograde season, I actually think that this is going to be perhaps one of the most important transits. We have a big astrological year without a doubt. It is this year that is part of a transition time that is going to lend itself to work and that in turn is going to lend itself to a whole other world by the time we move later into this decade. In fact, I do think it's once we get past the middle point of this decade, we will truly be in brand new ground and so much of the world, of the way we think, of how it is that we prioritize our values are going to go through a dramatic shift. And I would even say by the end of this decade, the world will look so different to what it is as we begin. So this is a year where we are identifying what must change. And there very likely may be frustration as part of this. In fact, if you think about your own life, how often is it the case that we may not actually change until things are not going right. And so it is kind of a principle that when it is that everything feels okay with our world, okay with our lives, we just continue to go along. But it's only when we feel that things must change because they've gotten to a place where they must change that we do the work that change requires personally and collectively as well. It is Mars moving through the sign of Aries that in and of itself can bring with it impulsiveness and impatience for change to occur. There is a desire that we can feel to start a brand new chapter, but taking action sometimes can happen before we have thought out those actions. Now you add to it this Mars retrograde season coming up that will begin right around July 26 is when Mars will go into shadow. You think about what it is that's coming up. We are going to have Mars making difficult alignments, squares with Jupiter, with Pluto. 
and with Saturn, notably with Saturn. And in fact, I do think one of the most important moments of the larger Mars retrograde season that is forthcoming is going to occur as we move to the very end of September and the very beginning of October. That is when two notable things are going to occur. One is Mars, not long retrograde at that point, will connect with Saturn. Saturn, on the 29th of September, the same day this alignment perfects, will be stationary direct. Even though Mars is retrograde, the retrograde itself normally does suggest that the energy is not turned outwards, but is internalized. It is also a symbol of how much pent up energy there may be. And then we have this slow moving, very powerful square, Saturn in its home sign as well, standing still in the sky. When a planet is changing directions, it is that much closer to the earth than it might otherwise be. And it is also at the height of its energies, the height of its power. So these two energies squaring off, literally a square taking place here. And then within really, Within 48 hours less, we have a full moon. And this full moon is going to happen in the sign of Aries conjunct Chiron. And I do think that right now with Mars perfecting its conjunction to Chiron right around Tuesday, this in some way is going to awaken what that full moon is going to represent for us. Where it is that we are approaching our lessons and approaching this time with awareness, with consciousness, where it is that we are understanding and identifying what area of life is feeling especially vulnerable, where our own healing and evolution is called for, where it is that we are being asked to own our power in healthy ways, and where it is most importantly with Mars. Mars I see as the serenity affirmation. So the serenity affirmation or the serenity prayer is grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Those are three states of power. Those are three different approaches to Mars energy, but each of them once incorporated empowers us. So what is that going to be for you in your own life? Where is it that you are being asked to take ownership for the areas where change must happen? Because it's going to come right to the surface now. Where is it that you may not have power in this situation and you can find serenity and empowerment by surrendering it? Where is it that the cultivation of wisdom itself can help you move to that more peaceful place of understanding where you have power, own the action you can take and take action in support of it and where it is that you don't have power, surrender it, turn it over, give it over to whatever it is you understand so that you ultimately can be restored to your own sense of self. That is part of how this energy this week is going to begin to point the way to larger lessons that we are going to be immersed in once Mars goes into shadow later this month. Now there's another layer to this understanding with that full moon in particular. Once we get to October 1st and that full moon occurs, there's this sense at that time, Mars squaring Saturn, we are having a reality check. It may be stark. It may not necessarily be easy, but it is obvious. It is plain where it is that we have used our actions and used our power in healthy ways and where it is that we have not. Where is it that we have taken as much action as we're going to and now it is no longer worth the sacrifice to continue down a certain pathway of action. This is going to invite us to either refine or to go another way. And as part of that, we may be emotional, we may be vulnerable, but that is part of the journey to claiming our power and our authentic power in the healthiest way possible. Now that full moon that's coming up October 1st, that is either going to represent another perspective, a sense of emotional understanding and a sense of culmination or completion to what it is that begins now, or 
that full moon is going to be all the stuff that happens now kicking up again in very powerful ways. One of the grandfathers of our practice as astrologers uh, is someone named Alan Leo, and he wrote a book called Esoteric Astrology. He was part of the New Age movement with the discovery of Neptune, bringing astrology back into mass consciousness and bringing a spiritual understanding, a mystical understanding to the cosmos. And it was Alan Leo in his book, Esoteric Astrology, who states that we and our consciousness determines how the chart is experienced. When we look at aspects, aspects aren't just A plus B equals C, just because this planet is squaring that planet or this planet is opposite that planet, it means that this will be the outcome. But rather, the level of awareness, the level of consciousness that a person brings to the sky will determine how that sky is experienced. And so it is right now that we are being invited to bring consciousness, to bring awareness to the sky and to ourselves. The more awareness we do now, the more work we do now to incorporate these lessons, the more likely it is that the full moon won't necessarily kick things up, but instead allow us a healthy sense of emotional understanding, emotional integration and closure. Now also this week, the sun is very active in the sky as well. Now the sun is an activating principle. If you think about it, the sun is heat, right? And so whatever planet the sun connects to, uh, the energy is that much more powerful simply by the nature of the sun itself. At the very beginning of the week, right out of the gate, uh, right around Sunday is when the sun will connect in supreme harmony with Neptune. This is a type of conversation that astrologers call a trine. It is supremely harmonious. It is one of easy exchanges of energy. The sun here is being spiritualized by the mystical energy of Neptune and Neptune is being heightened and awakened by the heat of the sun. Now the sun is essentially the receiving principle here though because the ancients believed that the slower moving a planet, the further out a planet, uh, the more powerful it was. It was the more dominant energy within any aspect, any celestial conversation. And so in this case, Neptune is much slower moving. Neptune takes about 160 years to go all the way around the zodiac. The sun takes a year. So you can see right there, there's lots more power with Neptune here. And it is the sun that is in the sign of Cancer. Cancer has to do with home and family and country and patriotism, our understanding of our ancestors and however it is that we define them. And it is this energy at the very beginning of the week that speaks to a sense of spiritual connection to the ancestors, a sense of emotionality, spirituality, where it comes to our understanding of our connection to country and to whom it is that our people are. Now on a more personal level, because cancer has to do with home, a lot of us may be feeling especially uh, as if we want our homes to be um, a heightened sense of beauty. Neptune is considered the higher vibration of Venus. We may want to feel like our homes are a temple to us, or in some way we may want to feel as if we're able to create an especially idealistic space right where we are at home. So this can be very encouraging and a very beautiful energy wherever it is that we are wanting spiritual connection, whether to create from that space or to connect from that space, this energy can be very helpful in that regard. But as we move further into the month, the energy will shift as energy tends to do, and the sun will start to align with Jupiter and Pluto. Jupiter and Pluto are close in the sky throughout this year, and it is this conjunction that is defining much of 2020 for a lot of us. Jupiter and Pluto both magnify each other's energies. And so Jupiter is a principle of expansion, Pluto is a principle of intensity, and among many, many other things. There have been volumes written about each of these planets in and of themselves. But imagine them together. It is Jupiter that is expanding Plutonian energy. 
It is Pluto that is intensifying Jupiterian energy. And in the matchup, of course, Pluto is the slower moving, the further out, and on the surface may seem to be the more powerful player. It certainly is the more intense player, but the nature of Jupiter, Jupiter known as king of the gods to the ancients, um, is so big, is so expansive, that the two of them together almost become equals, magnifying each other's energies, strengthening each other's energies, the uh, higher side, but also the lower vibration of each of these. And so now we have the sun standing across the sky from these two planets over the course of Tuesday and Wednesday. And the sun is already in Cancer. This is an emotional vibration in and of itself. And then you add the intensity of Pluto, you add uh, the expansiveness of Jupiter, and it heightens emotionality that much more. Because this is an opposition, we're being asked to consider other perspectives, and we may feel especially um, provoked based on external factors. And very likely with oppositions, they tend to play themselves out uh, within our interactions with other people. And so here we have this sense of some powerful force with Pluto, it can feel like there is a more uh, stark force that is in some way um, manipulative, I'm sorry to say, but this is a part of the energy. It can manifest this way uh, if it is not manifesting in its more higher sense. The higher sense of Pluto is transformation. It is rebirth. But the lower understanding of this energy is uh, manipulation and even unfairness in a way that feels particularly uh, unfair, maybe even hurtful as well. Again, I'm so sorry to say that, but there are going to be heightened sensitivities. So we are going to want to be mindful of that, especially as we move towards the middle of the week. Jupiter, on the other hand, Jupiter standing across the sky is overconfidence and maybe feeling as if you are interpreting things in a way where we're questioning how accurate it may be. We can have somebody who is over promising in some way, but this can also be the case where it can feel like there are other personalities who are larger than ourselves that we're trying to figure out how to get along with. And so regardless, I would say this might be a good time if you are so inclined and thankfully this year, because this is a once a year type of alignment. But what's different now, of course, is that Jupiter and Pluto are close in the sky throughout this year. Um, and so normally the sun will stand across the sky from each of these planets at some point each year. But this year, both of them at the same time because they are so close together in the sky. And so here the sun in the sign of home, a lot of us right now are having to spend time at home anyways. More of us than ever are working from home. If that's you, if you uh, have the great fortune to be able to do that, I would say this would be a really good time to do that, to be home, to close the door, to have that sacred space uh, so that you can feel a sense of uh, connection to your own feelings as we strive to understand them. I do believe that our feelings are the pathway towards spiritual growth. It is our feelings, if we're willing to grow through them, that cultivate wisdom. It is the process of learning through our feelings that allows us to cultivate wisdom and that includes spiritual wisdom as well. And so this could be a great moment to say, you know what, I'm going to cultivate spiritual wisdom right about now. The beginning of the week has all this energy that is so hopeful, so inspired. It is energy of fantasy and being swept up in a moment and over promising as well. And then we get to the middle of the week and it becomes vulnerable because of Mars and Chiron and it becomes stark because of Pluto with Jupiter standing across the sun. And all of this does suggest that some of us may feel like we're on a bit of a roller coaster at a time like this. So whatever it is that you need to do through your own experience, your own understanding, what does it mean to practice self-care? What does it mean to provide comfort to yourself. That is going to be the opportunity at this time, especially with the sun standing across Jupiter. 
and Pluto. Now, the other big news this week, it has to do with Venus. Yes, there's more. Venus on Thursday is going to connect with the asteroid series. This is the type of conversation that astrologers call a square. And it is one of tension, but also motivation. If this conversation sounds familiar, it's because we are at the tail end of the larger Venus retrograde season. Venus is direct, but is not completely out of shadow, but starting to approach the end. It is going to be not next week, but the week after that Venus will make a final alignment with Neptune before leaving shadow, putting this whole Venus retrograde season behind us. But at least for now and with this week, um, this is a conversation that has occurred before between Venus and Ceres. Going back to about a week into June, that was the last time that these two planets connected. At that point, Venus was retrograde. Uh, now Venus is direct, making its final alignment. Ceres is a symbol of nourishment, of care, of understanding what healthy care is, how to give, how to receive a genuine sense of care. It is Ceres that also speaks to nourishment and how it is that we feel genuinely nourished. With Venus there, how do we feel nourished where it comes to love? Where is love providing healthy care? Where is it that it isn't? Where has love become maybe codependent? It is gonna be this energy that invites us to find those distinctions and where it is that we have relationships that need more work to find that healthy place of caring for each other without being codependent, that work can show up at this time. But I think more than that, this energy is inviting us to be honest about where we are in love and why. How do we really feel about it? And our answers may surprise us. Is it that we are in a situation where we don't feel that we're truly getting what we need, where we don't feel that we are genuinely cared for? But it's also possible that we are the ones who are not necessarily providing or giving the type of care um, that our partner needs, that there may be areas here where two people could understand each other better. This can also speak to um, an understanding that perhaps it isn't a relationship that one wants, perhaps it isn't a romantic relationship, but that there are ways to tap into the energy of genuine, authentic connections where it feels like there is honest and authentic mutual care in ways that aren't necessarily moving towards romance uh, or beyond. This can be platonic love being just as fulfilling, if not more fulfilling, depending on the person and where they are in their lives and their journey and their values and what it is that they're wanting or hoping for. At the very least, this energy is going to encourage us to be honest about where we are in love and why, what it is that we honestly feel we want to give or can give to another and what our expectations actually are. A moment like this ultimately does align us with greater love than we've known before, whether that's romantic love uh, or all the other types of love that there are. What I love about this week for us, well, there is so much here. <laughs> like, it is a very active astrological week. But I am actually going to say that meeting of Chiron and Mars, I know that it is a challenging energy. I know that it's not easy. And yet it provides an incredible opportunity to own our power, to understand where we have power and to surrender the rest, but also to make us aware of where it is that perhaps there's more work to do to find genuine emotional and spiritual healing at this time. This can be a remarkable opportunity to truly feel a sense of conviction and worthiness, to have the kind of wholeness that we truly know that we deserve. That visceral sense of knowing, that is rare, but that is gonna be part of the journey, not just this week, but in the weeks and months ahead as we gear up towards an extended Mars retrograde season. This Mars retrograde season may be the most important transit to take place this year. We began the year with a powerful transit, a connection of Saturn and Pluto. 
rare in the sign of Capricorn. The last time we saw that was 500 years ago. We are going to end the year with a rare transit, the meeting of Jupiter and Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. The last time that happened was 600 years ago. Mars does go retrograde from time to time, it's true. But Mars is also an energy that we feel viscerally in our bones, in our skin, in our blood. Whereas these other energies can be big and conceptual, it is Mars that we know that much more intimately. And it is Mars that's gonna help us to get more honest about how we are using that very special power that we have to move our lives in the direction of our choosing. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up. It means so much. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week is speaking to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week. Unlimited access to special horoscopes like the Mars retrograde special horoscopes that are up right now in the superstar space and my website, NadiaShaw.com. And superstars get so much more all of that in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Again, stay tuned to the end of this video. I will include a preview horoscopes for each and every sign so that you can get some insights into what this upcoming Mars retrograde season is going to mean for you. And of course, as I said, those long videos, each video is at least 20 minutes long, each sign. I worked really hard on these videos. Uh, it took a week to do them because I wanted to be sure to do them right and give them the energy that they needed. Uh, the longest video is 30 something minutes. So we go through it chronologically. I explain the different important aspects, the peak moments, and what that means in a larger sense for each and every sign. So again, NadiaShaw.com, all the access is there now. Now I do have another big announcement. I'm so excited and grateful to share this. Uh, it really does mean so much. I have been asked to teach a class with Kepler College. Kepler College is a world-renowned institute in astrology. They used to have a master's program that they taught out of there for a few years, uh, and that was part of a move uh, way back some 15 years ago to bring astrology back into Western universities. And that led to the launch of four MA programs, four master's programs. Two were in England, two were in the US. Uh, I went to the one at the University of Kent in Canterbury. And they have um, two in the US, one was with Kepler, the other was with Pacifica. Pacifica is still going strong. Kepler doesn't have the masters anymore, but they have tons of professional development courses and more practical technical courses as well with the most brilliant astrologers alive today. And so it does mean so much to me that I uh, have something to contribute to their professional development program. And that is a class called YouTube for Astrologers. Now, this class is going to take place over five weeks throughout the month of August. I will be teaching this class and it gives you a chance to really understand how it is to uh, get a spiritually themed YouTube channel off the ground, to understand the different aspects of it, the practical uh, to the personal. We look at some understandings of your chart to see how to best approach what it is that you're doing in terms of what you share. Uh, and there's lots of details here. I mean, it gets very detailed in terms of understanding uh, what your vision is, what your niche is going to be, looking at practical matters in terms of equipment, uh, looking at how to make your astrology YouTube channel or your spiritually themed YouTube channel into a uh, self-sustaining, uh, self-providing business for yourself and so much more. It is mentorship and it is one-on-one -on -one mentorship, but it's also creating a safe space within a group so that we're providing mentorship and support to each other. 
And this is something that I had envisioned so many years ago. I have been on YouTube for a little while now, since 2008. And I remember when I first started on YouTube, there was a small handful of astrologers, just a small handful. And it's been incredible to see how the astrology community has grown so strong through this tool of YouTube, but there's so much more to it as well. There is the opportunity to be your authentic self in the world, to share what it is that you have to give, to turn it into something that allows you to provide for yourself and to those to whom you are responsible. There's the practical side of it in terms of understanding the techniques and the camera and all of that, in terms of how to get views and all of that. And then there is, of course, the more personal side to it as well and feeling good about what it is that you are sharing with the world because YouTube really is the world. And so if you would like that personal connection uh, to me, that personal mentorship, and it doesn't have to be an astrology channel, any spiritually themed channel would work well with this because we do focus on the more personal aspect, exploring your chart to understand um, what it is that you bring uniquely uh, and how it is that you want to present yourself. All of this as part of a journey of self-discovery, but also a practical business journey as well. I think in the last few years, since 2008, I've learned a little bit something and I just feel so grateful uh, to be sharing some of what I have learned uh, as part of the professional development program, especially with Kepler College. I mean, that is a huge deal uh, to be part of Kepler College. Again, I am incredibly honored that they asked me. That is a dream come true because that is the best of the best. Uh, and to be considered among them is, uh, is truly so meaningful to me. But then also to know that I'm going to be able to share the experience, the practical side, the personal side um, with up and coming astrologers and spiritual people who are going to put good things, put love and wisdom out in the world is phenomenal and incredibly rewarding to me. It's something that I have felt that I have wanted to do for so long. And this is the moment, this is the perfect uh, platform to do it with Kepler College. So you can learn all about that by clicking on the links in the description below. Uh, and that'll take you to their official page. But if you want a course day-by-day uh, -day breakdown, so each of the classes has uh, a syllabus for that class. Uh, and so if you want that more detailed understanding, reach out to me using the contact form on my website and we will provide that information to you. If you are on my newsletter, you already got that announcement as well. And so be on the lookout for that. And thank you. Thank you for your trust. Thank you to all the people who come up to me at events and uh, say how much my work inspired them to start their own channel. Uh, that truly does mean so much to me. And I feel like this is the next evolution of that encouragement and inspiration uh, and sharing what it is that I have to give. So thank you. And again, links in the description below. And finally, be sure to check out my books. Again, links in the description below. Thank you for making Body in the Cosmos and Prayers to the Sky number one new releases in New Age Astrology when they first came out. If you have one of these books, please do leave a, a review, an honest and loving and positive review on Amazon uh, because it really does help the books so much. And this was also a labor of love. Um, and thank you for all the love that they have gotten. I also have a partnership with Cosmogram and through Cosmogram, you can get my interpretation of your unique birth chart. You go onto their site with the link in the description below, you enter your birth data and within hours you are emailed a PDF of my interpretations of the different aspects, the different planetary aspects in your unique natal chart. So learn more about that in the link below and thank you to everybody who's gotten that and all the wonderful feedback that that's gotten as well. It really uh, is that much more meaningful to me that I have something to give and all these different ways to give it um, is just thank you. Thank you for blessing my life with your trust. Synchronicity University, right now summer school you can still sign up you can get downloads to the classes we've already had we had uh, neptune 
through the signs and houses today. That was a lot of fun. Next week, it's going to be Neptune in aspect to planets uh, in the chart. So that's going to be fun as well. And now stay tuned for the Mars retrograde preview horoscopes for each and every sign. As well, remember, be on the lookout. Soon I will be posting a Mars retrograde special horoscope for the collective where you'll see these preview horoscopes again. And you can go onto my website, nadiashaw.com, to download the full version. Thank you. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. Hello, fabulous superstar Aries. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from late July 2020 right to the first days of January 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, this is a Mars retrograde season set to take place in your sign. Mars is your ruling planet. And so when it is that Mars goes retrograde, it means that much more to you. It represents a time of personal reflection and deeper truths being revealed, most notably about you. But it is now that some of those truths are likely to come about through moments that feel challenging, that may feel stressful. But what I can say is that this is a time when you will grow, you will transform, you will change and on the other side of this larger retrograde season you may find yourself transformed in ways that last for the rest of your life and i don't say that lightly this is an incredibly important time frame for aries out there now all aries are going to feel this energy but it is those aries born between april Hello, fabulous superstar Taurus. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This Mars retrograde season will take place entirely with Mars in the sign just before yours. And what that suggests is that there is a whole lot stirring within you, in your soul, in your psyche and in your spirit this might be a time when it feels as if secrets are revealed whether it is about you things you hadn't realized about yourself or about others and it may also be a time when you are uncovering some truth about your own motivations this ultimately can be a powerfully cleansing time but sometimes we don't know what it is that needs to shift or change on an energetic level until it is that we feel discomfort or discontent. And that may be part of this time for you as well. This is Mars after all. Mars is not known for necessarily being a peaceful energy. And considering that the most important connections Mars is going to make. Hello, fabulous superstar Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope for the Mars retrograde season going from July 26, 2020 to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it is going to be Mars that will spend this retrograde season moving through a part of the sky for you that has to do with friendships and group endeavors. And that's just the start of it. But the fact that this part of the sky is considered social it does have to do with your interactions with others. It means that either it will be other people who will embody this Mars energy for you and the way in which that they come into your life, hang around or feel like they're coming back around may be especially prominent. But it's also the efforts that you put into a group endeavor covered here. Now, in a more lofty sense, this is the part of the sky that has to do with mass media being known in a larger way. And that may be part of your motivation during this time. Now, one of the key understandings of this Mars retrograde season is twofold. One is the strength of Mars moving through. Hello, fabulous superstar Cancer. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it is going to be this Mars retrograde season that will be entirely at the very top of your sky. This is considered an especially consequential area of the chart. 
It has to do with your own sense of destiny, the goals that you have for your life, but also aligning with a higher, more loving vision for your life than perhaps you knew before. On a more practical level, this speaks to our career and us taking action towards our life purpose. And where it comes to Mars, action is key. In fact, this is going to be a time when you may be pouring energy towards some larger desire or something that you are wanting to manifest. However, along the way, there are going to be moments that will lead you to question, ultimately, if this is the direction for you. It is going to be an intense time, without a doubt. And a time that asks you to consider what is worth sacrificing for. What is Hello, fabulous superstar Leo. Welcome to your Mars Retrograde special horoscope covering July 26th right to January 3rd. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is a phenomenal and important transit. For you in particular, this part of the sky that Mars will be in throughout this transit, it speaks to understanding your place in the world, not just literally, but spiritually as well. Where is it that you feel you are able to engage others as someone who carries wisdom, as a spiritual teacher, but also where is it that you allow these gurus into your life? Now, what I really love about this part of the sky though is that it is about putting things into place that allows you to manifest bigger and better in the fullness of time. In fact, it will be at the end of this transit as we move into January 2021 that all that you learn, all the ways in which you refine, all the ways in which you gain personal clarity, but also the action that you take will directly contribute to bigger and more powerful manifestations than you've known before. It is going to be Mars that prepares you for an important year. Hello, fabulous superstar Virgo. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope covering July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is a remarkable and important transit for you. This Mars retrograde season will occur in a part of the sky for you that has to do with profound and meaningful transformation, regeneration, and rebirth. Mars retrograde ensures that the rebirth is truly from the inside out. This part of the sky also connects to resources and your relationship to financial institutions. All of this says that this is a time that is going to invite you to consider wealth itself, riches itself, help you to understand what it is within you that you can define as resourceful and how it is that you can attract resources, including financial resources into your life. So there is a lot to talk about here. One of the key characteristics, an important part of this Mars retrograde season will be how Mars is communicating with other power players in the sky, most notably Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. It is Jupiter and Pluto especially that are going to be part of... Hello, fabulous superstar Libra. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope covering July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, this is a phenomenal and important transit, especially for you. The ruling planet of your opposite sign is spending a retrograde season in your opposite sign. This speaks powerfully to partnerships of all kinds, romantic, professional, and otherwise. There is going to be a moment of honesty, really looking at your own feelings, in some cases complex, in other cases maybe more straightforward. And there will very likely be at least one notable reality check as well. It is this transit that is all or nothing. It will make or break partnerships. It will either help you to realize the depth of connection and understanding and help you to dedicate yourself that much more to the partnerships you find yourself in, or you will evolve, you will change, you'll realize you're ready to go in a different direction. Now, Mars speaks to truth, the truth of what you feel, the truth of what is behind the curtain, if you will. 
Hello fabulous superstar Scorpio. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020 right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is set to be a profoundly important time for many out there, but I think that is more so for you. Your ancient ruling planet Mars is going to be part of an ongoing dance with your modern ruling planet Pluto. These two planets aren't the only ones involved in the larger dance, but we've got Jupiter there close to your ruling planet as well, magnifying Plutonian energies. And what this says is what is happening in one area of life isn't just limited to that area of life. There is a sense of self-knowledge and connecting with what is true for you coming forward. And there's a sense now that what is happening, especially in your daily life, with your work, with your health, in some way reaches very deep, is a core part of you, your identity, your understanding of self. I do think that this is one of those rare transits that for some out there, the lessons that come forward will stay with you. Hello, fabulous superstar Sagittarius. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a phenomenal astrological transit without a doubt as Mars retrograde season takes place in a part of the sky for you that has to do with winnings. It has to do with creative fulfillment as well as the creations that you bring forward. Self-actualization is covered here along with your children, the children you have, the children you want. Now, wherever Mars goes, we feel the need to pour that much more energy into that area of life. And that certainly is true for you. There may very well feel like there is that much more to do now, that much more that there's a desire to gain, but a sincere desire to have some agency, to feel like you're more in control, in particular with these particular areas, is going to be part of the guiding principle now. Now, what I find especially intriguing is that Mars is going to be in retrograde season entirely in its home sign of Aries. Now, this makes Mars... That Hello, fabulous superstar Capricorn. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, this is a phenomenal transit designed to help us to understand ourselves and our power. For you, this Mars retrograde season is going to take place with Mars at an angle, which brings with it that much more a sense of urgency. You add to this the fact that Mars will be making key connections with big power players in your sign, well, it does mean that where Mars is traveling through, having to do with home and your past and your family of origin, and you feeling at home with yourself, well, this work becomes that much more imperative, that much more urgent, and that much more on the surface. It is as if a part of you is ready to truly be at ease, to find a deeper layer of self-acceptance and a deeper layer of forgiveness. But sometimes acceptance takes work. Sometimes forgiveness takes a whole lot of work and that work isn't always work that we're doing with others. Sometimes it's work that we have to do with ourselves. And it is this... Hello, fabulous superstar Aquarius. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is a remarkable transit. As Mars moves through its home sign, it is going to highlight your mind, your communication, your curiosity. This is also part of the sky connected to your neighborhood and making connections more locally. Your siblings, your cousins are covered here and it is Mars that can bring with it renewed passion and motivation and action. But there's another side to Mars and that is aggression. Not necessarily the easiest energy, but when it is that we tap into the higher end of Mars, great focus and determination become possible. 
It allows us to own our power more fully, to trust it, and to make great things happen. And so for you, it is going to be the development of mind and your own curiosity, what it is that you have to say, not just literally, although that is part of it, but in a larger sense as well. What do you believe is your voice in the world and how are you going to use it? Hello, fabulous superstar Pisces. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is a phenomenal time as part of a year that I think is changing priorities, changing directions for a whole lot of us out there. Mars ultimately is about understanding our power, the limits of it, but also authentic power and how to best empower ourselves. Now for you, you are going to get an accelerated course in this now. I'm not promising the easiest transit. There is a lot of stress indicated here and frustration. But when we have energy like this, developments and forward movement is pretty much guaranteed. Now for you, your sense of empowerment is going to come about through two distinct ways. One is working on self-esteem issues. Where it is that it's long overdue is going to come to the surface now. But I think more importantly, more viscerally for a lot of Pisces out there, this is going to represent a time where finances are going to be part of what feels challenging or stressful.